Um, yeah, as said by Katarina and Daniela, today we have Hussein Sengu, who is going to give us the first presentation of the day. Hussein Sengu is a lawyer based in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, but he's also the right person, I think, for this, for this presentation because he was actively involved in the constitutional reform processes that were started during Jakaya Mauricio's era. He is a public international lawyer and we are looking forward to your presentation, to the discussion at the end. And yes, Hussein, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you very much for uh, being part of this uh, very, very good follow-up. Uh, thank you. So um, we will start with your presentation that will last about 15 minutes and then we'll turn to the question and answer session after that. To start with that, uh, I'd like to let you know from the beginning of it. Some of us, we all know the historical background, but I think it's worth to share so that we can open up discussion. And some of the hints are very, very important. Uh, one of which is to see uh, the transitions from the colonial power, uh, the, our constitutional transition from the colonial power to, to currently. And that was in 1962 because we acquired independence in uh, 1961. So in 1962 to 1965, we had a constitution which was a cop and paste from the, uh, uh, our, our former colonial master that is uh, in, uh, England. But again, in 1964, we had a very significant changes whereby we had uh, to go 12 years and the interim constitution why we are constructing uh, the union government issues. So if you remember, uh, we came to unite uh, the constitution of the United Republic of Tanzania that unite both Zanzibar and Tanganyika came into function in 1977. And uh, uh, so from 1977 up to date is where we are uh, using the recently constitution of United Republic of Tanzania, which we have adopted uh, due to the uh, revolution and uh, union between Tanzania and, uh, and Zanzibar. So briefly, that is who uh, we are in terms of the constitution. So uh, December 2020, President Jakaki Kete announced that uh, uh, he's willing that uh, uh, now, after being received a lot of requests and the claim that people, they want a new constitution, and he announced that he's willing uh, to formulate the Constitution Review Commission so that they can start the, the process. This was a very good uh, uh, news received by Tanzanian, and it was in the end of the year, and uh, it was uh, almost concluding the end of the era of uh, his phase, phase one. But there was a lot of struggles because, uh, you know, uh, Jakaya Kikwete's willing was uh, not well received by the, uh, not well received by the, uh, his, uh, his ruling party. So they were within the party contra controversial that either they say, no, we don't have to go for the constitutional review, but he, because he was the president and he has already made a proclamation, then there was nobody uh, uh, has to go against the president declaration. So the constitutional review was established in April, 2011. And later again, in April, 2012, President Jakal Kikwete now is under that constitutional review act also uh, in, uh, established the Constitutional Review Commission. And it was very famous because uh, you won't mention this without mentioning Mr. Joseph Warioba, who was the chairperson. And he was a, having a very good experience in the legal fraternity because he was the former chief justice. He was the uh, 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 prime minister in the uh, Nyerere's administration. And he had a very vast experience on legal issues and the constitutional matters. Uh, on uh, uh, June 2013, uh, the Warioba Commission uh, presented the first, what we call it, the first famous draft, which was later very critically opposed by the majority of the CCM ruling member, and we found out why it was very much uh, opposed. And on November 2013, uh, one of the very active members from the uh, Constitutional Review Commission, uh, Mr. Mvungi, uh, was murdered when the constitutional review is on the process. And that was after a very stiff discussion on the first draft. And uh, in December, 2013, uh, the second draft was presented because the first draft was very much criticized. So the second draft was presented to the president, both of United Republic, by then was Kikwete, 
and the chain of, uh, of, of Zanzibar so that uh, they can go through before uh, presenting it to the uh, to the to the uh, to the House of uh, the the Constitution uh, the Constitution Assembly and uh, on February 2014 the Constitution Assembly comprised of the member appointed by the president was convened was, was, was convened in Dodoma. Now the act has already uh, uh, has already produced the commission. The act has already the commission has already produced the first and second draft. Now it was tabled. Uh, I mean the president now appointed the uh, the uh, uh, the constitutional assembly. And uh, one of the very important issue to note here is that uh, uh, Mama Samia Suluhu, who is the current president of Tanzania, uh, was also a member of that uh, constitutional assembly, but not only member, there is a very remarkable history with, in connection with what she is now, but she was also the current, uh, she was also the, 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 the interim chairperson of the uh, constitutional assembly. Uh, during that time, the opposition parts organized themselves and they call themselves Ukawa, Umoja Wakatiba Yawananchi, that the, the unity of people's constitution. So, they define themselves, they leave out all of their differences. And it was for the first time in Tanzania, we found that the political parties, the opposition the political parties, they work together so that they achieve one, one objective. It was a very strong unification, a very strong unity. So, uh, and it was then that uh, the second draft, because the first draft was very much touching all of what people uh, were addressing, that why they want a constitution. A lot of issues that people they want and uh, they were at, and people they were very much comfortable with the first draft. So the second draft, after being uh, uh, reviewed, commented, and a lot of issues were omitted by the president's office, by the parliament. I mean, by the uh, constitutional, uh, by the constitutional parliament. Uh, the second draft was not very much uh, likable by the majority of the people. As a result, even Ukawa, uh, the uh, uh, the Umoja Wakatiba Wananchi also, they say no, they boycotted it. And uh, even during the voting day, they went out of the parliament. So what happened to us after that long history, when we are winding up the short history, we found out that in June, 2016, uh, when Mr. McFully took the office, and this was his first year in the office, he said that, and, and this was when he was addressing the National Assembly for the first time, he said that, uh, he will, uh, he will finalize the constitutional review process where Mr. Kikwete administration ended. And he gave a lot of hope to the citizens and, and citizens because, you know, they believed from his manifesto, from the campaign, he was campaigning that he will uh, very much uphold the uh, ordinary people. He'll make sure that he make changes to the ordinary people. And then people, they had 100% uh, confident that it is true that he is going to, uh, to facilitate uh, the constitutional review process where it ended because the constitutional review process in Tanzania ended uh, uh, in dilemma. But later, November, from June to November, he denounced his statement and he say constitutional reform is not his government priority. And he say very vividly when he was addressing in one of the congregation that he will never entertain the constitutional reform issues. And that rose a lot of issues. And by that time, uh, 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 we started to see a lot of other, uh, a lot of other acts were, um, uh, were enacted, which are in, they are in one way or another infringing the space of media, infringing the space of uh, CSO, but also infringing the space of all actors in one way or another who could be vocal and continue to uh, advocate on the constitutional reform. So the first question is, what about our existing legal framework? Uh, because we are here, we are supposed, according to the, uh, to the projection, we are supposed to have the referendum and the new constitution by 2014. But we are here still, no referendum has been conducted, no constitution has been, has been passed. Why are we here? What about our legal existing uh, framework? And that brought me to the quotation of Abraham Lincoln. He said that, the best way to get a bad law, uh, the, uh, the best way to get a bad law uh, is law repeal is to enforce it strictly. And that is what happened to Mr. McFool. So uh, he wanted us to get bad laws that can confuse people so that they will not be able to get back to the, uh, to, the, to the process 
of constitutional review. And the fact is uh, the constitutional reform legal framework in Tanzania is a significant contribution to the area of the constitutional review itself. All of those registration that we are meant to structure so that they can guide us to reach to the new constitution in one way or another, they are the ones who contributed to, uh, to bring us here without a new constitution. So the legal frame itself is one of the issues that uh, we need to, 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 to dig out and, uh, and, uh, and, and find that uh, more of the constraint, more of the barrier coming from, from there. And this is very important because as we are starting to uh, wage some of the discussion is how are we moving forward? We cannot move forward without thinking about the a legal framework, the existing legal framework and the, uh, the registration like the Referendum Act and the Constitutional Review Act. But again, you can ask, uh, everybody can ask uh, him or herself, what is wrong with the key five players? Because people, they were very much confident in them. And the main player is the uh, Constitutional Review Commission, which was resolved later by the president. And this was resolved while the process was not over. How could you resolve the, uh, the, the commission uh, while the process is not over. By experience and the practice, we all know that the commission should exist until the constitution has been found, that people has already been voted. So this is a very, very big question that we should also ask ourselves. And if we are moving forward, are we going to reform it back? Is it going to be uh, formulated by the president back or what, to, what will happen to the, uh, to, the, to the constitution review commission? But again, another group which I think was a key player and very important to think about is the president office, which according to the Constitutional Review uh, Act, they vested a lot of power within that particular office, which in one way or another gives another, uh, 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 can provide a block, I may say, can provide a block to the people who are main key players in this constitution, to the parliament, to the constitutional assembly, I mean, to the constitutional assembly, which is also big, a, a very big uh, 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 part to play in the whole constitution uh, uh, reform process. And another, another key player, which I thought is also very important to discuss is the four assemblies. So we call them Mabaraza. The four assemblies are legally established under the, uh, under the uh, Review Act, uh, and they are uh, comprises with the uh, CSOs, FBOs, and all representative of the people groups. And these were very important because they play a very vital role. When, they, uh, com uh, when the Constitutional Review Commissions uh, were gathering the people's opinions and the people's uh, 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 suggestions, it was from these platforms where uh, they represented the people's voice so that uh, the, 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 the commission can get it from, uh, from what people they think because the commission cannot be able to reach all of the Tanzanians. And now we are almost uh, 55 million people. So the forest plays a very vital role, but later on, what are these CSOs, FBOs and the Mabarazas were doing to enforce that uh, we wanted to remain in the first draft because by that time, uh, very few actors where we are where, where, where doing advocates and we're criticizing the process of moving from, uh, from, uh, uh, from the enactment of the first draft to forcing people and forcing the uh, Constitutional Assembly to adapt the, uh, the, the second draft. But also Ukawa, Ukawa is the key player. They played a very vital role in the parliament and uh, uh, they ended up not voting for the second draft and they leave them out of the Constitutional Assembly so that uh, the CCMs and their affiliates, then they can go ahead because that is what they, 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 they wanted. So there's this discussion now that uh, although Ukawa were few in terms of numbers, but they could stay in the parliament so that we can have a lot of uh, disagreed votes, you know, uh, although we won't be able to have, uh, they won't be able to change anything, but at least the, re the record could show how many people disagreed on this. But now, if you see the record, the record shows that uh, uh, a lot, the majority have voted for the second, for the second draft. There were a lot of uh, uh, issues raised on this, on this matter, and which is subject to the, to the discussion. But from my end, I believe that Ukawa played a very vital role, making sure that uh, 
uh, a lot of people they understand that this process should not be uh, should not be forced by a certain group of the people. This process should be vested to the people for the people. And this is what the Ukawa has been demonstrated during the uh, uh, Constitution Assembly sessions, even later after the Constitution Assembly sessions. So thank you very much for that. I think time is not friendly. We could have discussed a lot of issues. I'll be around for questions. Thank you, Sane. So we, we now, I mean, I mean let's, let's start, I think, with the biggest question, because you, you mentioned of the Warioba draft, which was more accepted by the majority of people, but also um, Ukawa was pro that draft. And then later on, we have a shift into the second draft. So what were the, the major issues that were at, at stake for CCM, let me say, that they thought the first draft would not be in the favor? Okay, thank you very much. So uh, the first draft uh, quickly, was touching one of the very controversial issue about the presidential power. Uh, you know, it has been uh, a lot of claiming that uh, the president is uh, owning a lot of powers and extremely to the extent that he would be a good dictator if he wishes. And we have witnessed the previous uh, regime. And uh, it can be a very good dictator under the constitution because the constitution allows it. The president is vested the power to appoint almost everyone in the government the ministers, the, ju the, the judges, you know, the directors and the, the uh, electoral commissioners, everybody is appointed by the president. So that was one of the issue about the first draft. But the second issue was uh, about uh, the, uh, the parliament. We all know that uh, the speaker of the house is not neutral. The speaker of the house recently, under the recent constitution is coming, is coming from um, uh, uh, particular political parties, and it becomes very difficult to control the House. So the, sec the first draft comes out and they propose that we need to have a neutral Speaker of the House so that he is able to, uh, to, 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 to chair the, the seats and to become very neutral discussion amongst the Member of Parliament. As you know, majority uh, since we started in 1995, since we started the multi partism in Tanzania, uh, Majority of members of the parliament has been the ruling, the ruling part. So those are the few of the issues that uh, we are very keenly observed. But also the issue of uh, <coughs> the issue of uh, electoral commission, uh, national electoral commission. As we all know, that in all of the previous elections, there have been a lot of complaining that uh, the election was not free, also not fair, because. Uh, uh, as it has been said earlier that uh, the president is appointing almost everyone in the, uh, in, the, in the commission. And again, the same that has been appointed those people is going to compete for the, for the election. But again, it has been observed that even the electoral commission is like a toothless bulldog, uh, has no power. But there is another clause which is very controversial also in the constitution, uh, I mean, in the, in the election act that uh, uh, the chairperson of the electoral commission, whoever is announced, that as a president is not going to be uh, disputed. So no one can compete that uh, the, uh, the, 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 president, uh, the presidentship after being uh, nominated, after, I think after being announced by the uh, chairperson of the electoral commission. Uh, Hussein, uh, that was one of the topic we, I mean, one of the question issues we discussed yesterday in the discussion with Dawkins and John, and that was which, which authority or which court has the power to contest decisions made by the president or the, uh, the election results. And if I'm not mistaken, during the draft, there was also a mention of a Supreme Court and what role was to be assigned to that particular court would, I mean, I, I think it was also one of the issues. Maybe you can explain more about that. Exactly. So recently, what we have, we call them the uh, the, uh, the constitutional court. But in one way or another, they are not being very well vested by the power, and that's why the first draft uh, uh, proposed that it's high time now we need to have a supreme court. And the supreme court could be uh, uh, could be vested with the power to entertain such cases. So if we are about to dispute the uh, election. Uh, uh, result as far as the present seat is concerned, then the Supreme Court will be in the very good position to entertain. But not only that, we all know that the uh, the structure, the judicial structure between Tanzania and Zanzibar. In the mainland, we have the independent courts, 
that they are not interfering the Zanzibar issues. But again, in Zanzibar also, they have the high court and the other lower courts. So if we have the Supreme Court, it will be easier to take some of the issues which are very controversial to the Court of Appeal, especially the election matters, and they'll be reducing a lot of issues that are, we are now facing in every after, before and after the election. Thank you, Sain. So, but, but, but of course, that would also be subject to the reduction of the power of the president, because at the end of the day, if we have the Supreme Court that has such power, but we have judges that are appointed by the presidents, we, we, we can say they would be working impartially in deciding on matters brought before them. Um, we, yes. I think you, you also mentioned, um, I mean, Kikwete, Kikwete initiated in 2011, 2012, these constitutional reforms processes. He, he's CCM, he was CCM, but there have been um, discussion and arguing that so long as CCM stays in power, we cannot dream of a new constitution. What, what's your take on that? Thank you very much. And uh, this is the same question that a lot of people are still asking themselves that why Kikwete took this initiative? Uh, <laughs> is it to popularize him himself uh, regardless that he is contravening with the member of his own party. So that's a very big question that we are still asking. But again, I'm also agreeing with the fact that uh, this, uh, the recent constitution of 1977, as long as it is existing, there's no way that CCM is going to lose the election because uh, uh, as you all see that uh, it gives a lot of opportunities. It, it gives a good ground to play all rough that you can imagine so that they are able to win the, the, the election. For example, one of the very simple issues that the, uh, uh, the agents of the election at the local level, they are very much connected to the, uh, to the civil servant, that the director of the council is now going to uh, be the agents of the election in that particular district council, who is also appointed by the president. So you can imagine that route, uh, that system comes to the root whereby you cannot survive to win the election. So uh, the first draft, if the first draft was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was passed by the uh, Constituent Assembly, but also go to the referendum, I'm very much sure that it, could be, it, were, it was able to change the Electoral Commission because it was proposed that even the Electoral Commission structure to be changed. Even what you have mentioned, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the court also, the composition of the court, but the appointment could be seized and the power of the president. So even, even if we went to the election and then the CCM won the election with those environment, people could say that was free and a fair election. Thank you, Sen. In one of your slides, you had a beautiful quote and I noted it down. It's, I, I'm quoting, the power in people is stronger than the people in power. Now, based on that beautiful quotation, so where, how strong is the power in people in Tanzania to, I mean, to kind of force a new constitution to come to life? Well, thank you very much, first of all, for, <laughs> for highlighting that. So for the past, I can give you a good experience that for the past five years, we've been going from worse to worse because uh, the power of the people has been very much blocked and infringing by different registration that has been enacted. And it was purposely so that to make people come and not to raise their voices. If you touch people uh, in terms of right to the freedom of speech, which was very much infringed last time, uh, the freedom of expression, there are the power and right of the media. You see, we have uh, the, a lot of issues that in one way or another demonize the power of the people so that they can voice up. So that was very much happened in the last, last in the last in the in the past last five years. So I'm very much hoping that with the new the administration, and I have witnessed a lot of good discussion from the parliament yesterday and the day before yesterday after the new president announced uh, held out his uh, her speech. So it is vividly shows that now people they feel they have power even to raise some of discussion. If you were following yesterday, one of the member of parliament was asking about the, those registrations, which in one way or another, they're infringing people's rights in expressing their uh, freedom of expression and so forth. So what actually gave, gives you hope because it's still CCM, just maybe a, 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 another face, a female face on top, 
but we have 99% of um, CCM present in the parliament. Okay, so what I'm saying is, what gives you hope that this discussion is going to be better? Although we do have 99% of the member of parliament being from CCM, and those, I mean, we have a number, and I know you know the precise number of those so-called opposition that were actually given offices um, by by our late presidents. So, I mean, what, I mean, is there anything that can be done with this kind of parliament? Yes, absolutely, yes. We cannot just stay put because, first of all, we have seen the willingness of uh, uh, the, the current president. She shows a willingness. Like uh, the day before yesterday when she was uh, uh, issues her speech in the parliament, she says she's willing now to talk with opposition uh, political parties. She's willing to, she's recognized the importance of democracy. Those were very powerful words, which still people there are discussing, which we have missed those words for the past six, five years. So that's first of all, the willingness of the president's office. But second, we have seen also uh, within the, those 99% of the uh, representative in the parliament, but there are also some of the vocals and the critical uh, person whom we think where we can start is now thinking about repealing those laws, which in one way or another were infringing people's rights to voice up their voices. So that is where we can start. So let us not be very much optimistic that within these five years, we are going to review the constitution, but let us start from where we ended that. Let us start with the legal framework. If we are able to change those bad laws, we'll be in a very good position in the future to start thinking about now, where have we ended? Yeah. With the thank, you for, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Hussein. So um, now we have President uh, Suluhu giving us hope that maybe a new constitution might be coming or laws are going to be repealed that are more friendly to, I mean, human rights in Tanzania. And also maybe that might bring about change in, in, in how the country is run. And, but during during the constitutional reforms, we have we had issues on union matters, Zanzibar and Tanzania mainland. And what were the voices in Zanzibar? Were they in favor of what was proposed in the first draft, or were they not? And what exactly was proposed there? What were the issues at stake? Thank you very much. First of all, we must uh, recognize that Zanzibar they have their constitution first. And uh, the, this, the 19, 1977 constitution is like uh, uh, the constitution of the United uh, Republic, which to them uh, is not, uh, and you can, you can imagine one thing that between the two constitutions, there's no supreme to them. There's no supreme constitution, but technically the uh, United Republic constitution were supposed to be a supreme document. But imagine uh, the Zanzibarian constitution, it looks, at the same level as the United Republic Constitution. That is one thing you must notice. But second, the issues that we call the matter of union and the matter which are not of the union has been elaborated in the Constitution. And uh, one of the, what they call the white paper comes out with the result shows that uh, Zanzibarians, like uh, more than 87% of the Zanzibarians, they would like to see three governments the federal government, Zanzibar government, and Tanganyika government. More of the reluctant comes from the mainland. And there's no any justification as why uh, leaders from the mainland, they are very much reluctant to go for the three government as it has been proposed by the first draft of the Warioba uh, draft of the constitution. So if you ask a Zanzibarian, uh, sometimes they would like say, oh no, we have our constitution and we are very much satisfied. We are just waiting one day it, uh, he or she will come a right person to take out from this, uh, from this, from this union. So it did not mean that they have their constitution; they will participate fully in the constitution. I'm not saying that they didn't participate, but they participated partially because already they have their constitution that is guiding them. They have their president. They call it a mandate uh, place. That's why they have their own mandate. Except that we have issues like there are like 27 issues that deals, we call them the matters of, uh, of union. But again, I think technically speaking, now we have in Zanzibar, the president from Zanzibar, in mainland, the president from Zanzibar. So this has never been happened for the past 10, 15, I mean, for the past 25 years. And this, they are very much active now 
I'm very much optimistic that they'll do their level best uh, doing what best interest of the Zanzibarians is. Thank you, Sain. We have a question and, 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 and um, someone is asking how far in this struggle of a new constitution, um, amending laws, how is it known to the ordinary man and woman in Tanzania? I mean, you were involved in advocacy and all that, and that's where, I mean, your, your heart lies. So what is, how, how far are they part of the process? Well, uh, thank you very much. That is a very, very, very big question. So during the process, I can say they are a mixture of, uh, we can call three, two or three contexts. Uh, during the process, I think uh, uh, the whole country was following up. The whole country was following up. And uh, the, I must admit that the non-government organizations and uh, development partners play a very vital role making sure that the civic education is reaching to the people. So there were a lot of mass awareness during that time. So people were, te were and a lot of radio, TV programs about the new constitution, about the process and everything. Then all of a sudden, when uh, the, uh, the interruption of the uh, constitution assembly comes up and proposed for the second draft, then people lose their hope. So like 80% of the people, they, what we call it, wakazila, they say, okay, now we don't care. We don't want the second draft and we don't want to hear anything about this because we all knew that the voice of the people is in the first draft and the parliament decided for us, we don't want to, 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 to waste our time no more. So it's like people, they deserted the process since that time. So it's high time now, there were very few who continue to work on, but they were very much infringed by the enactment of those laws which infringe the light of freedom of, of speeches. So if the process comes back and we landed from the second draft, uh, people, they will not be showing very much cooperation. But if we revive the process and the people there are sure that uh, we are going to start from the first draft, I'm pretty much sure that everyone will fully participate. Thank you. So, so what 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 I'm I'm getting out of this is that most the ordinary man and woman were more in favor of the first draft, at the famous exactly. Warioba draft, than the second one. Exactly. Okay. So, um, anyway, so we we uh, was one of the issues also because we 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 the discussion we had yesterday we also talked a bit about independent candidates running for office none uh, not being affiliated to any political party and i'm sure you are aware of the of the christoph tequila case in tanzania where he was actually uh, that was taken to the high court in tanzania and later to the african court and was that an issue that was also discussed during the draft and and if the review process would be assumed um do do do, do you think that is something that would be possible I mean, running for office without being affiliated to any political party? I mean, it's one human right, I, I guess. Exactly. And I forgot to mention that this was very much uh, cleared in the first draft. And uh, the first draft, if I remember, it gives two options. First of all, uh, you know, we have, three, uh, we have three positions that are going for the election. We have the what, the very local level, the local government at the local government level, the what, and then we have the member of parliament, and then we have the president. So there are three level of the posts that are running for the general election. So it, it, the, the first draft proposed that these two uh, law level, uh, the what representative and also the member of parliament, people must be free without being uh, affiliated with any political parties. They can go and run for the election on the uh, 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 private candidate. But for the presidential, there were a lot of uh, uh, discussions and they framed it very well in the first draft that uh, this is a very, very high position and uh, it's not easy to just someone from nowhere doesn't have any route, doesn't have any connection or network, comes out and say, I want to be the president. So it was also addressed in a way that it can, uh, it can suit the African or Tanzanian, Tanzanian environment. But when it comes second round on the second draft, that part was omitted. So we also see how well structured and written was the second draft to, to limit that specific particular space of running for the office of the president. And so, um, so another question is how far was the 
in, in, in the review process was the women representative issues discussed, issues of quotas. I mean, we know we have in Tanzania the so-called spatial seats, but you also know spatial seats, who appoints these women to occupy those spatial seats. And um, I mean, at the end of the day, they're there because they were appointed and kind of impartial in the way they discuss issues that are discussed in parliament. So what was, what, how, how far did the women representative issue um, get involved or discussed in the review process? Well, uh, first of all, I must admit that I'm the feminist and I must declare that uh, the first draft was, uh, was uh, very well structured as far as the gender issues are concerned. Uh, first of all, in terms of the representative of the member of constituents, uh, for the first time we saw something which was very, very unique. So the draft proposed that in, uh, in a constituent, they, are, they will run two, uh, uh, two candidates, a male and a female. So uh, in the end, it would uh, have a composition of the uh, house which have a representative of both by any means, it's not a competition. By any means, the direction will learn and they will, uh, the outcome will have the uh, male and the female candidates who are going to the, to the representation of the uh, member of the parliament. That makes 50-50 of uh, percent of the representation. But the, uh, for the second draft, they only proposed again, they omit that beautiful part and they say, no, uh, the president is going to have uh, uh, power so that they uh, can issue the appointments of the special seats. So again, we landed back to the special seat, which they are still looking like uh, a privilege, but uh, not the rights of the people to represent themselves as far as gender is concerned. It was like a privilege that uh, the president is giving her and her and her uh, because the president think fits as far as uh, his uh, own thinking is concerned. Thank you. We still have two questions and then our session will be ending. Um, um, the next question is, I mean, uh, President Suluhu being the uh, the chairperson of the Constitutional Assembly. And now the president, and we are kind of getting hopes that something is going to be resumed, started again, laws repealed. So how far do you assess or analyze maybe the failure of the Constitutional Assembly under her umbrella, kind of, and now being the president, what does it, what difference does it make? Yeah, uh, first of all, to put the record clear, uh, she was, uh, uh, she didn't check the the, uh, the Constitutional Assembly to the end, she was in telling. So she took at uh, the first phase where the regulations and the laws were not yet being enacted of the Constitutional Assembly. So she guided the whole process until the Constitutional Assembly, because this was the first time in Tanzania, uh, the regulations and the, the, the the, the rules were made and then she handed it over, but she, she was very powerful. And uh, to me, I believe that was a very, very difficult time because people from different cadre, from CSOs, from uh, political, from kind of professional you can mention, they meet, there were more than 300 for the first time they meet and uh, you guide them and they make rules and regulations that will guide them. To, so she played a very, very vital role. Then from there, Mr. Sita, the late, took over, and it was official now uh, as the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Constitutional Assembly started. So she took the first part, but the second part that led us to the second draft, she was not, she was not the chairperson. So we cannot, she cannot take a blame on that. <laughs> and uh, uh, from my own, I uh, mean, from my own, my own uh, point of view, I still believe that she has a very big chance to bring back the process. But again, she cannot just wake up tomorrow and say, let us take back the process. Uh, she will, uh, we will face another problems. I think we need to go through these bad laws that has been enacted, repealing them. Put the playing ground very free and fair, making sure that people are comfortable, making sure that people, they believe from that the, the institutions that have been created uh, to guide us through the process and the laws that are there, they are fair so that people can fully participate in the process. Then there, she can announce part of the process, but we need to go through the, the, the legal framework process. Thank you, Sane. I'm sorry because I say we 
don't have that much time and that is a mistake on me apparently we still have like 30 minutes so i'm going to take more questions so anybody no who has a question no please hussein i think is here he's no prepared problem. to answer all questions anyway so um um, and I, I, we have a question that is based on our current constitution of 1977. What actually is problematic? What is problematic regarding um, issues on agriculture, health, education? You know, what, what, what is the problem there? And I mean, and may, maybe the question is directed also more in yeah. the in the catalog we have of social, economic, cultural rights, and civil policy. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you wanna highlight on that. Yes. First of all, those are very, very important issues, but very unfortunately, they have been just mentioned in the preamble. So they are not like they are within the Bill of Rights. They are not like the things that people can claim for the enforcement because they're in the Constitution. So that is the 1977 Constitution. They are just the things that has been mentioned in the preamble, that we as Tanzania recognize ourselves, the socialist countries upholding ourselves as the country that has the peasants, blah, 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 blah. So they are not in the part that they are enforceable as under the Constitution. So that was the very big issues that people are also blaming on the 1997 Constitution. But they have been also, if you, if you go through the first draft, the Warioba draft, those issues were in the Bill of Rights that uh, in terms of the economic issue, in terms of education, healthy, all of those important human rights issues were, were there and the people would be able to claim them that uh, 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 the country is supposed to enforce them so that they are part and right. They are, they are the right of the people, their constitutional right of the people. But in the recent constitution, they are not uh, the constitutional right. They are just in the preamble, just uh, putting it the, the, the first phase of the constitution so that the constitution can be seen a very beautiful, like a poem. Thank you. So poetry, poetry in a constitution. So we have the so-called rights and the principal police directive, I think, which as you mentioned, are not enforceable uh, before a court of law. Um, well, so Hussein, I mean, do you publish? Do you publish? Uh, I mean, I mean, if somebody will, would be interested in 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 in, in your work, or in, in in your colleagues' work that are also working on these particular issues, what is the forum? What would be the forum where we can access your work or any related politically related work on in, uh, about Tanzania? Oh, thank you very much for that question. So I had the website, but uh, I had to shut it down because the the atmosphere was not <laughs> the atmosphere was not friendly. So I had a lot of publications on the constitutional, on the political issue, but also democracy and the human rights. And I think it's high time now. I'm thinking about reviving it back. I'll uh, very soon share with you the uh, the links. But now they are still closed. <laughs> The atmosphere oh. was 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 not good. People were disappearing every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That 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 is actually one of the. I, I mean, that is the feeling I'm getting. But mind you, I'm in Germany, so I might be wrong on this. But I have a feeling that, although it has been only a few weeks since the tragic loss of our president, but I have a feeling that. Um, Although not in in writings, but a certain sense of freedom, a certain sense of being able to speak has come back. Is that the feeling that you are getting? And how 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 far are also journalists and political activists in Tanzania also, um, I mean, taking advantage of this new regained freedom? I would say. Exactly. And uh, you don't have to do a, a research. You have to go through the social media and you'll get your answers. People now are talking politics. But for the first five years, people have changed because if you post anything that is political, but again, uh, more of criticizing the regime, you find yourself uh, uh, arrested. Not only arrested, but uh, there was also registration introduced and enacted that is uh, uh, shutting down even the social media uh, platforms. 
Uh, we've seen the Jami Forum, which was a very good platform, and uh, still the owner of Jami Forum was uh, was was uh, was taken to the court. He was having more than 16 cases, criminal cases. <laughs> you see, uh, we had uh, a lot of other vocal people on the media platform. They've been arrested. We saw a lot of journalists. They have been uh, detained, and uh, they've been uh, uh, no one nowhere are they until now most of them. So at least now you can see people are free, not only in the social media, but for the first time we saw the uh, chairperson of the political party, Mr. Mboy, addressing the nation, although he was outside of the country. Soon after the death of the late Mbfu, then he announced and then he issued very, very, very sorrowful uh, speeches. But we also see even, I'm telling you, the discussion within the parliament, although 99% are the member from the ruling party, but we also see most of those, of course, within the ruling party, there are also few who are reasonable. There are also few who are vocal. We have seen them raising their voices in the social media platform, but also in the house that uh, it's high time now we want to bring back the national unit, the democracy, the rule of law, and the people to feel free in their own country. Yeah, uh, thank you, Saint. So uh, pe people are saying Magufuli was a builder. He built a lot of things. Now a lot can be relevant, but he was a builder. And maybe, I mean, that is something I was asking myself. Maybe he wanted in his first term to build and then postpone constitutional reviews to his second term but unluckily, he's no longer there. If that's something that you also share. Yeah, if you ask me, as far as my uh, political analysis skill is concerned, first of all, uh, that is from me, that uh, even the, this general elections, we see that 90% of the, uh, the representative, the member of parliament are from the ruling party, but also we've seen the key players people who were in the electoral commission, he took them and he appointed them also as a member of parliament. That was the sign showing that he was kind of preparing the parliament so that they are going to extend his tenure. So that is likely if you ask me, I can tell you with those uh, vivid examples, because you have the 99% of the people who can say yes. And then you have uh, uh, the, 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 the technical people, you took them from the constitutional uh, review and they were very key players. You put them, you appointed them as the member of the parliament under the presidential seat. And they are within that parliament so that they are able to convince other members of the parliament who they are not aware about the constitution, who they are not aware about the regal draft and everything. It is very vividly showing that Magufuli was preparing uh, the constitution assembly so that, uh, I mean, the, 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 the assembly so that they are able to extend his tenure in the constitution. Okay, thank you. So, so something was coming, but not necessarily in the line with the Warioba draft, but in, in favor of him staying in office. Now exactly. you also mentioned issues of enforced disappearances, be, people being shot, being killed, disappearing and all that. You also mentioned Dr. Mvungi's death. And my question is how far was the investigation done? Were there any results that were made public? And um, I mean, what is, what 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 was made available? What information was made available for the public to know what, what happened to those people and who who took responsibility or whether somebody who took responsibility for the disappearances? That's a good. That's a very good question. So imagine uh, we were in the middle of the process and uh, it was a stiff time where people are debating that we must stay with the first draft. Others say no. The, the national, the constitutional assembly and the ruling party say, no, we want the second draft. At that discussion, very stiff discussion, this guy was butchered. And he was butchered uh, in his home place and the people, they fetch all the documents, including the laptop, the notice and everything that was in one way or another connected to the constitution, his work, because he was the, also the member of the constitutional uh, reform committee. And later on, we have been told that uh, those were the criminals, imagine, that those were the robber, they went to the house and they robbed. They robbed without harm everybody, and he had a very big family, no one was touched. It was only himself was butchered, and then they took. Imagine how comes the robber, they get into your house, they didn't take any precious metals, they didn't take a car, they didn't take anything, and they have already robbed the house. They simply take a laptop and the documents, off they go. So it was treated as a criminal case. And in the end, those people 
two people were arrested and uh, I think that that case was, uh, was ended in the very last few years. And they were told that those were the normal criminals then they were, uh, and they were sentenced as the robber. It was a robber case. <laughs> Yeah, that is very surprising, but also not surprising, kind of. Um, so um, you mentioned the role of civil society, NGOs, I mean, also the Fora, Mabaraza. And um, the next question goes on how far were uh, religious institutions involved in the process, Bakwata, or uh, the whole Islamic community, churches, Catholic and Lutheran, were there any involvement in, in, the, in, in the drafting of the, of the first draft, maybe also the second? Yes, exactly. So all of those you have mentioned, they are also part of the forum. So the forum comprises of the CSOs, NGOs, faith-based organizations, uh, and a representative from certain union and certain unions. So, uh, they were given a very high priority that uh, the Constitutional Review Committee uh, set a meeting with them before they went out to the, to the ordinary citizen. So in the first draft, they were very much involved, but also when uh, the draft was to be tabled in the parliament, one of the stage was for the people uh, to be uh, informed, the civic education. So they also play also a very vital role to use their platform as a religious leader in churches in Moscow to tell people to participate, to tell people about the constitution. So they played a very vital role. Thank you. So they did disseminate this information on the new constitution and, and how, I mean, to tell their congregation members or followers that they had to be actively involved. Now, um, another question we have regarding on the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, and how far did they, I mean, were, there, were they an inspiration during the draft, during the review? Or do we have enough that covers these uh, sustainable development goals in the current constitution that you would say, actually that sector is well covered even now in the 1977 constitution? Sorry, come again, Anish. Um, I'm saying that the question is regarding the sustainable development goals. So the question is how far were the sustainable development goals um, part or how did they motivate the first draft or the second draft? Or is this something that you would say, actually the 1977 constitution has components, has articles that already cover well the sustainable development goals is just a matter of implementation? No, technically the 1997 constitution that is the current constitution have not directly covered it. But again, in, this, in the first draft, that was also being highlighted, very clear highlighted, because it doesn't only address the local issue. The constitution was very modern and there was like a person who is encouraging to think locally, but act globally. Uh, think globally, but act locally. So it has some clauses, which in one way or another, I can tell you that uh, I forget even the clauses, which has been a while now, but there are some provisions shows exactly on the, uh, uh, MDGs issues, uh, climate issues, and all of the issues that we think as the country moving forward to the, uh, to the 91st centuries, we are able to engage and create institutions that can in one way or another uh, work together with a global, but only linking uh, the Tanzanians in terms of uh, laws that are in one way or another, we are committed to uphold those issues. But again, in the second draft, everything was uh, back to square one. Okay, thank you. Um, and what about the introduction of Sharia law? I think that it was a discussion at a certain point when Kikweta was still in power. And how far is it still relevant? Or how, how far was it relevant also during the process that ended up failing? Okay, so I think that was a uh, discussion was started even before the constitutional process. So the Muslim Council, I think, uh, wages that uh, proposition because, as you know, in Zanzibar, they are using that. So, I mean, there were like a discussion between the Tanzania and Zanzibar Muslim associations, and then the motion started there. But during the constitution, that was not very, very much an issue. And uh, even in the first draft, uh, that was introduced, but not in a such a way that uh, it gives the whole autonomy 
to the to the to the Sharia laws, but it introduced and uh, recognized that the, the Muslim they have their regulations and everything like what it is recognized today, although it is not in the Constitution of 1977, but it has been just recognized, but not something that is enforceable under the Constitution. It leaves it as a moral issue, so that a certain group of the people they are able also to issue to, to deal their their issues. So it was just recognized, but even in the discussion. That was not very much a big issue uh, during the constitutional process. That issue was um, a separate issue before the constitutional process. I think that time there was a lot of issues in the parliament, in the street, people that were asking themselves, why do we have to accept Sharia and everything and so forth. But in the constitutional reform process, that was not an issue. Thank you. And now I have a question that I need to quote word by word. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so the question goes, um, for having a look at the current security issues concerning Islamic uh, movement in the northern of Mozambique, which we share bordered with, what are the constitutional arrangement in Tanzania for potentially allowing military action against it or becoming part of a joint operation? Is there any discussion in Tanzania right now on how to deal with that threat in the southern border? And I know you're working on these issues as well, yeah. So um, give us an insight on, on, on this. Wow, that's a very good question. I, will, I wish I could share in the soft talk. So I have the, I published this with the public international and police. So this is the analysis of the CVE and the terrorism aspect of Tanzania laws and the compendium. So this is a very good piece that is relating to your, to your question. So uh, this, was, this is a very big issue. And uh, the bad thing is that uh, we have what we call POTA, Prevention of Terrorism Act in Tanzania, which is also a drive to this. So the act was meant to be uh, a cure, but it is a drive uh, to all of what is happening. The movement from Somali to Kenya, Tanga, Kibiti to Mozambique is uh, growing day after day because the engagement of the government is to counter. And there is no space that has been provided very much to the community so that also the community is participating. Because in Tanzania, when it comes to the issues of security, they say, no, 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 no. Civilians don't touch this. This belongs to the, to the state. But civilians, they're also part and parcel of the security. They're the ones who are affected. They are the ones who knows what is going on on the ground. You can imagine now, Across the border, Tanzania to Mozambique, there is one district called Tandahimba, where there's a lot of attacks happened in last time. And a lot of effect, if you go there, you can see. A lot of recruitment of the people, a lot of radicalizations. There are a lot of these we call madrasas. People are recruited, radicalized. And when they come back as if Tani, they did things that you cannot, you cannot imagine. So that big and huge network going to Mozambique is a very big problem. And why I'm saying that the Prevention of Terrorism Act in Tanzania is facilitating it, because the act is first of all pinpointing, like a certain group of the people, they're the ones who champion it. And the people are reluctant on that. But second, the mechanism and the process of uh, uh, making the legal process so that you are able to investigate, arrest, and uh, do a due process of these people is very bad. People have been arrested under this act, being suspicious of the terrorist or violent extremism or, or mesalance. They have been arrested for the past eight to 10 years. That itself is a very bad thing because their families, their network, their relatives, their followers, they're rising up outside there. They're creating something also what we call a timing bomb. Within their jail cell, one of my friend did a mini research which is not been published. Yet. There is a lot of radicalization going in the prisons because you have detained these people for the past 10 years. What are they doing inside there? They are creating for us. They are recruiting and everything. And that's why I say this act is a drive. The legal framework itself in Tanzania is providing a vital role. Imagine now the country has deployed an army across the border, but the civilians are complaining that the same army is threatening the people. Imagine the army is arresting people and the people are disappeared. So people, they will not show cooperation. Imagine those people, they're the ones who know who is the illegal immigrant in this place. They're the ones who know the routes that the government doesn't know, the informal routes from Tanzania to Mozambique. They're the ones, you know, the border border riders. 
the border border riders are the ones who carry those people, taking them across the border to Mozambique. But if a state is threatening the people, there is a very low chance that is going to get uh, cooperation so that they are able to, uh, to address these issues. So this is a very, very big area that we think also the legal framework is a problem. The government approach is a problem. As long as the government is not, doesn't want to cooperate with the other actors, civil society organizations and the community, we won't be able to control this. The radicalization will continue. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the illegal movement will also, will also continue. And we, are, we have to expect a lot of other attacks along, along the border. Thank you, Say. Now I'm going to really take the last question. These are two, but I'm going to make one out of them. Um, issues on, on climate change, environment, environmental protection. Um, and now, um, was this also something that was supposed to be incorporated in the new constitution or is it incorporated already? We are talking of crimes that are um, maybe crimes under the Environmental Prote Protection Act. Um, I mean, also issues on the protection of a health and, 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 and good environment, healthy and safe environment, but also the protection of national wealth, natural resources, considering who, I mean, how many investors we have coming from abroad and I mean, mostly from Asian countries as well, uh, who are interested in the natural resources that we have in the country, but not for the sake of um, the, the interest of the, Tanzanian people. So was it climate change, environmental protection, protection of nat uh, national wealth, natural resources? How was it, or how do you see this? How what should be done? What is being done? Exactly. So uh, again, I will say the first draft was uh, very, very clear. Apart from the bill of light, but there are also, they call it the miscellaneous important issues. So those important issues were the ones who uh, explain a lot and they created a lot of constitutions so that they can deal with the global issues like the uh, climate, like the Millennium Development Goals and everything. That was very clear. But again, uh, you can ask yourself when the draft was sent to the president, they omitted almost 17 issues from, uh, from the, the first draft and including those issues. Why? Because I think they were very much afraid to lose their, their business as far as the mineral extraction is concerned what is going on on the ground and so forth. So the second draft took us back to the 1977 constitution. So we still have, uh, we are still very much now depending on the enactment of the registrations only, but not on the basis of the constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Sain. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, for the insight. I think it was really good. And um, yeah, we wish you and your family safety. And um, I'm sure we'll be seeing you soon at any of our um, seminars, net talks. And yeah, we are looking forward to working with you again. Thank you again, Hussein, and have a beautiful day and greetings to all in Tanzania. Thank you very much for having me and thank you very much. I'll be glad also to join you later. Thank you.